Hey everyone, John from Ride Upstate, and today I have an interview with Eric Price, California driver. He's got a YouTube channel here, and he's been going at it for a couple years now, and he agreed to do an interview with me. Now, the video you're about to see is actually from a longer interview that's on one of my other podcasts. So if you're interested in some of the other things that we talked about, uh, which include his business, uh, the state mate, a as well as his uh, LDS faith and some of the things that he believes. You can check that out. There'll be a link in the description, also in the description, and in the first pinned comment will be a link to Eric's channel. I hope you enjoy this. This is a little bit different from what I've been doing because... You know, the news has just been crazy, and it's pretty much all been about Uber and Lyft in California. So without further ado, here's that interview. You have a YouTube channel where you share about uh, your 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 ride-sharing uh, side hustle, mm -hmm. and you're, you're, you're doing delivery now. You haven't done ride-share in a while. Uh, I have. So... so. Uh so it started out, you know, my, my wife, she's like an, an inspiring YouTuber, except she, she just kind of documented all the road trips and stuff we've been on. I work for Delta Airlines. So uh, we, we have the privilege of, of traveling more than the average bear, I think for right. uh, pretty cheap. And so, you know, we've traveled quite a bit, probably more than we should. But um, so she's done that. And I, you know, I, in order to kind of, make it work i'd had to have a second job that was pretty flexible so i just started doing uber and because i can you know about the most free thing you can do you can start you can never do it again if i don't want to which i haven't for a bit um but i realized very quickly there are some some skills that aren't taught they don't teach you how to be successful when you do it and so i was learning on my own i watched a couple other people's videos and my first video i kind of made on a whim just the 10 tips to become a top Uber driver because I had a really high rating and I felt that I, you know, my hourly rate was something I felt pretty comfortable. I could do, I could repeat a, you know, a, a repeatable thing. And I wanted to cut down the learning curve for other people. I didn't really expect to, to monetize a channel or anything. And mm -hmm. I, I, so I posted the video, this is like early 2017. And I don't think I even looked at the channel again for like five months. I just posted that <laughs> one video didn't put, and then I went back on the channel. I had like 500 subscribers. I was like, Holy crap. Like, I guess I'm actually like maybe helping some. I had all these comments. I kid you not. I didn't have the app on my phone. Nothing. I just posted this video and never went back to it. And so I was like, man, this is a real opportunity to, you know, maybe down the road, be able to monetize it. Cause you need at least a thousand subscribers to monetize your channel and 4,000 hours of watch time, which is a lot. Yep. And so I, I never really made it like intending to really make money off of it. It was just kind of like, Hey, maybe I can help some people. And if somebody signs up, I get a referral bonus. Awesome. Um, but as I found that there is, a, a, you know, a large enough group of people that really appreciated, you know, getting, you know, not being lost when they started doing it, transitioning from a, a, a desk, you know, people that are, especially right now, people are out of work and trying to figure out additional ways to bring home money without being tied to a job, just in case they're, they're able to go back to their job soon. It's just been a, a godsend for people to be able to come and watch, you know, some short stuff on how to go from having no clue how to get started to having to pretty good idea what they need to do wherever they live to be successful. Yeah. You were, uh, before I started driving, you were one of the channels that I started watching. Oh, uh, cool. This was like, uh, 18 months ago. Cause I started researching it about six months before I started doing it. Cause I'm like, I'm not just going to jump into this. Yeah. And I, I learned really quick. There are some headaches that you can avoid me personally. I don't know about you. I don't drive at night even though it's, it can be more successful, but there, uh, there are some risks and caveats that come with driving bar scene. And yeah, I don't usually drive past 10 o'clock at night. Um, yeah, that's why that is wise. Uh, so <laughs> sometimes I'll stretch it to midnight, but most times I don't drive. I dr I don't drive after 10 o'clock at night. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that I, I've really found about your channel was just how forthcoming you were with information and just how how gracious you were because when you were putting up the uh the videos of 
uh, of the ride-alongs with, with, with passengers, and even some of them who were, you know, kind of rude, you were, you were still very, very gracious, whereas, you know, everyone else is putting up, you know, kicking them out of the car, stuff like that. You know, I've never had to do that. I've never had to kick anyone out. Um, yeah, I haven't either. So I think for me, I've just, you know, and I've talked about it in some other videos, I, you know, in, in a lot of the ways that we, we respond to, to issues is the way we prepare our minds for when they happen. So, uh, you know, it's the same thing we were taught in church. You have to know, you know, when you're, when you're faced with a temptation, you already have to know what you're going to do when you're in that situation. If you don't, then you, you don't really know what decision you're going to make, whether it's drinking or drugs or anything. Like if you don't have, you haven't already made up in your mind how you're going to respond. So I, I don't, I'm not saying to the same level that I've done that with rideshare, but I already know like my job is to leave the house with a positive attitude and try to exude that onto other people. Hopefully I, and you know, in Los Angeles, pretty much everything's controversial these days to somebody like, you know what I mean? Like, and so I try to, uh, when I've driven and I've, I've had people in my car, whether it's a, a raging Trump supporter or, you know, the opposite people that want to overthrow the government. I've had every, all the spectrum. I, you know, I like to understand where people are coming from and keep my, uh, what might be um, fringe thoughts to myself and, and just, you know, pr try to exude, you know, joy and, and happiness on other people. And 99.9% .9 of the time people thank me. I'm, you know, how many times I've had people say, man, you're the best Uber driver I've ever had. I don't really do anything over the top. I've just prepared myself for how I'm going to interact with people before I ever leave. I think like, like you said, choosing when you, when you drive mm, helps cool. with that. It yep. absolutely helps with that because you're not dealing with anyone who's, you know, most of the time you're not dealing with anyone who's not in their right mind uh, because it's been influenced by alcohol or drugs or, or, or whatever. You know, it doesn't take much for people to act. You know, I learned that really quick when I started in San Francisco, I was driving after work. So I was driving from like six to midnight, sometimes one in the morning. And you find out real quick. That it's, you get a different crowd than when I, when I would drive, 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. I'm able to avoid traffic most of the time. I'm just taking people to work. Everyone's in either sleepy or in a, they haven't had a, any external forces drag them down. So most people are in a pretty good talkative mood anyways. And I, I just found that to be so much fun to just, you get all walks of life rather than 80% drunkards. Like yeah. When, you're driving. yeah. when I was, when I, uh, when I was driving into the office, that was when I made money on my way into work, you know, on my commute. Yeah, because uh, that's how I, when I, when I first started, so I was, I was living in Sacramento, driving to San Francisco, and I put on a destination trip when I got about an hour away. And almost, I'd say 90% of the time, I'd end up with a, a trip, oftentimes going right to the airport where I was going to work. And yeah, yeah this is great. I'd make, I'd make 30 bucks on my commute. It was like, oh my gosh, like anyone that's not doing this, like it's free to click, go online. Like anyone that's not putting on a destination trip, going to their job. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, especially if you work at an airport. Long trips, you're, like oftentimes not deviating from my course in any way. I could right. might be off the exit, pick them up, taking them right where I'm going anyway. So right. for me, it was nice. Now you, you, uh, you actually lived in your car for a while too, didn't you? Yes. And I, I'm not afraid or ashamed to say it. If you're familiar with uh, rent prices in San Francisco, they are not what it's like in, in Saratoga Springs, New York. <laughs> And the people that I would talk to, the things that I would hear would just blow my mind. So I was, you know, I was in the process of getting married. And so I, I was living with my parents up in Sacramento. It turned out my wife was on a J-1 visa. And so her, con her uh, contract ended. She was a nanny for a family. Her, uh, her contract ended. So she ended up moving in with my parents. But I wasn't, I was hardly ever there. So I'd, <laughs> I'd come back like two nights a week. But I would, uh, I would drive down to San Francisco, work uh, eight hours, go to bed right away. This is when I finally changed my routine where I wasn't driving at night. And uh, I, would, uh, I would go to sleep right away after work, wake up, drive eight hours, go to the gym, work out and shower, go back to work and then go home. So I was doing these two day cycles and I'm not saying I would recommend it to everyone, but with a Prius, it's on a, uh, hey, when you're, when you're on a budget, it wasn't, it wasn't awful. It was, it was uh, something I'd prefer to never have to do again, but I, I wouldn't change to what I did. And anyway, I saved thousands of dollars doing it. So one of the things that has kept me watching your channel is you always say, this might not work for you. This is what works in my market. And so 
whenever you would share that, I was always thinking, okay, so how's that going to work in my market? Because he's in a lot denser population. He's got yep. a couple airports nearby. Yep. I don't, you know, uh, I don't have nearly the population. Um, most of the people around here own cars. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I had to think about, all right, how am I going to adapt that to my style of driving in, in my area? And ev- most everyone else on their channels was saying, this is what you need to do to be successful. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's not going to work for me. <laughs> yeah, that's great. If you live in downtown LA, like things that work here, like they might not work. Like, I don't know what it would be, but most, even small towns might have a, a rental car place where, you know, people drop off a car and now they need a ride. Like, and so you just got to adapt. Like every, every place is going to be, be different. San Francisco is vastly different than Los Angeles. The type of customers you get, oh my gosh, not, not the same, not the same. So um, yeah, you're right. I think, you know, you have to take, uh, my dad always said, you know, listen to people. It's like a smorgasbord, you know, there's my, maybe out of the 10 things you're fed, maybe only three of them are going to help you cast the seven away and just use those three principles that are really really good for you so well listen man it has been great having you uh i appreciate it uh where can people uh get in touch with you and get some get some socks and get some cards okay so uh if you go to the statemate.com www.thestatemate.com uh, you can get our cards won't be available until october that's when we're going to be delivering on the kickstarter probably towards the end of october when they'll actually get shipped uh you can get any of the socks right now like in all of my videos, I have a, a code, uh, it's Uber30, lowercase or capital, doesn't matter. Uber30, you get 30% off your whole order. That goes for all our state socks. So some of the other uh, print-on-demand stuff doesn't follow that because we, we uh, outsource that. But all the socks we keep in-house. So that's ready. And hopefully by uh, late October, um, we're going to have the cards ready for delivery. Hey, once again, I want to thank Eric for agreeing to be interviewed. I had a great time on the interview. I hope we can do a collaboration like this again. If you want to see more videos like this, comment and let me know. And if you know anyone that would be willing to do this with me, hook a brother up, all right? Uh, As always, I just want to remind you that if you are in a small market, it doesn't mean you have to settle for small profits. All right, bye.